A man protesting police brutality was killed Saturday night in Austin, Texas. His name was Garrett Foster, and he went to the demonstration with his wheelchair-bound fiance. Foster was legally carrying an AK-47 style rifle, something he was actually interviewed about on social media. Take a little listen. They don't let us march in the streets anymore, so got to practice some, some of our rights. This was not the only time he did this, okay? Uh, he was kind of known within that protest movement for coming this way. Now, here's the salient part. At some point, a car got involved with the protesters. Some say it was just driving through an intersection. Others say it burst onto the scene. Either way, Foster was in a crowd of protesters that surrounded the car. Then this happened. Everybody back up! What do we know? The driver opened fire. They told police that when they called 911, so we know that. We know someone else in the crowd also opened fire. Not the man you just saw being interviewed, though. There are no reports of Foster firing his weapon. All of the guns were legal. Take that off the table. This is not a conversation about, was it right to have the gun wrong to have the gun? Under Texas law, everybody there was okay, legally. Nobody has been arrested. Why? Police say they are investigating, and the application of stand your ground, which is a defense to any homicide charge, that uh, you were in reasonable fear of serious injury. Does that exist here? If it, if it is... There's not going to be any more to the investigation. There won't be any charges. That's not uncommon in Texas. What we don't know, the identity of the shooter who killed Foster. Why? Well, if there's no charge, if there's not a suspect, they won't name the person necessarily. Cops say they won't release that name until someone is arrested. We don't know if Foster ever raised his weapon or even spoke with the driver. You will, though, because there are a lot of people there. You will know that. Police will find that out if they endeavor to. We also don't know what the driver was doing before the car was surrounded. But we will, because there were a lot of witnesses. Let's start piecing this together. It matters too much. James Sasanowski was there. He heard the gunfire. He saw what went down. Welcome to primetime. I'm sorry you had to live through this but I appreciate you taking the opportunity to help us understand it a little better. Simple question. When it comes to this, what did you see? We were marching north up Congress Avenue. There was a jet black luxury sedan headed east on 4th to turn right onto Congress, where there were, to head south, where there were hundreds of protesters. The thing I want to make extremely clear, and any witness will tell you this, but many of them are dealing with their things. They haven't come out like I have. The driver intentionally and aggressively accelerated their vehicle into a crowd of people. That is extremely clear. Wait, let's, driver, question, let's question it as we go, James, because it's an important detail. Uh, because there are others who say uh, that the driver was there, according to normal traffic, blocked by protesters, became spooked and was trying to get away from a threat, and that's what you're calling accelerating. No, 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 no. That's not true at all. Not even close. He was at the intersection, wanted to turn right. I don't even know if he used his blinker. We were coming up Congress. We were going perpendicular to the way that his car was facing, and he accelerated into and through his turn and almost ran a bunch of people over. Uh, this, like I said, this was intentional, it was aggressive, and he accelerated into a crowd of protesters. He could have waited for us to pass, or he could have gone slowly, and we would have allowed him to go through. It wouldn't have been a problem. There was uh, other traffic here and there. It was mostly blocked off, but he could have made it through just fine. He intentionally accelerated into the crowd. He incited the violence, period. So when he did that, that's when protesters started to surround the car. Did you see Foster? I did not see Foster specifically. Uh, yes, protesters, of course, surrounded the car because they almost ran over, ran people over. They started smacking his windows and stuff. Eventually, a bunch of people jumped in the way. Car had to stop, had to stop abruptly, suddenly, which is what happened. 
I was about 20 feet away from the window a little bit. I was kind of in the behind the car, almost off to the side a little bit. And uh, I was kind of looking forward, looking back over my shoulder, forward and back. While I was looking forward, I heard the first few shots. And then I turned over my shoulder and I saw sticking out of, fully extended out of the driver window was his left arm with a handgun in his hand. And I watched several more shots get fired. I saw the orange flashes off the top of the gun. In the moment, I thought that he was firing indiscriminately into the crowd. Obviously, now we know that he was aiming specifically at Garrett. Well, we don't, we don't know did, what he was doing. We know he hit Garrett. And the issue became, why did he fire at Garrett? Now, on that, Garrett Foster, the deceased, uh, on that, you can't help us. Isn't that the truth? Because you didn't see what happened before. So I didn't, I don't know whether or not Garrett pointed his gun at the vehicle. The driver called 911 the moment he started driving away. He knows how to play the system, clearly, because he called the authorities. He got his story in first. That's how you play these things and try to get in as least trouble, the, the smallest amount of trouble possible. He knew, how to, he knew how to play this. What I saw was his arm was perpendicular. Like I said, it looked like it was in the crowd. Out of the five bullets that he shot, three of them went into Garrett. You cannot tell me that that was not intentionally aimed at Garrett. It obviously was. I now, understand. What did makes, people tell you about what happened before? Uh, it was from the moment the car stopped to when the first rounds were fired was less than 10 seconds. It was extremely rapid. There was not a lot of turnaround time uh, there. It was just people screaming at the car, obviously. I don't imagine that there was any kind of real conversation going on. Um, you know, I... I, Did anybody I, tell you I, that they saw the victim point the weapon at the shooter? Nobody has told me that. I have not heard any witnesses say that they saw Garrett point at, point at the shooter or at the vehicle. But I want to be very clear that the driver incited the violence. He accelerated into the crowd of people and he shot first. I understand. James, look, I know this is going to hit you in waves. This is a very hard thing uh, to be around when it happens and know what the result was. Um, you're, I know why you were there. I know you were there uh, to fight for justice, and justice is what we should all want in this situation after a thorough investigation. Thank you for helping people understand uh, what you saw, what you heard, and what you didn't see, and what you didn't hear. James Sasanowski, yes, last word to you, quickly. Uh, I want to emphasize that this comes back to Black Lives Matter. If black lives mattered in this country, we would still have Garrett today. It is in your own self-interest as a privileged person to support marginalized groups of people. Thank you, Chris. I will see you soon. You have a nice night. James, you too. Be safe. All right. So our next guest 